Okay, so on this one, number four, there are there's a few introductions to some ideas. What a chord is, it has an idea of a central angle, it has an idea of an arc measurement. It has a lot of ideas. So we just want to start right, right here, what they ask us to do. Sketch a circle whose equation is x squared plus y squared equals 100. Using the same coordinate axes, graph the line x plus 3y equals 10. So, so we graph these first. I, I'm going to graph it using GeoGebra because I don't have to put y equals 4 and plus the iPad is easier with that. So I'm just going to bring in my picture from GeoGebra. Okay, so here's our picture from GeoGebra of the circle and the line. So now we have, it says already, it says that the, uh, this line should intersect, and it does, the circle in two spots at 10, 0. I graphed that point already. And then we can find out what this other point over here is. GeoGebra gave it to me, um, and we find out that it is at negative 8, 6. So B is at negative 8, 6. Okay, now it says use algebra to find them exactly. Wow. Well, there's a little bit of algebra to do. First of all, if you didn't have GeoGebra and you wanted to graph this on a calculator, you just have to put it into y equals form. So for this equation, this isn't too bad to find in y equals form. That would be y equals negative one-third x plus ten-thirds. I'm, I'm guessing a few of you might have done that if you went to this, this problem, okay? Now this problem in y equals form actually isn't too bad. So this problem you'd have y equals, now I subtract the x squared, so I'd have, let's see, 100 minus x squared, and I'd have to square root that. How now the, you do that? What's that? Where did you get that from? I took this, Equation right here, they gave us, subtracted the x squared from both sides, okay. and then square rooted because it's a y squared. Okay? Now, the only problem with that is when you graph that on our calculator, our calculators can only graph functions. So when I graph this on a calculator, it's not going to give us the whole circle. It's going to give us the absolute value of this, which is going to be positive. So this is only going to give you the top half of the circle, which is fine because that's where it intersects. If you want both top and bottom half of the circle, you have to put a, do one with a positive and one with a negative in front of the square root, and then you'll get both halves. So once you graph that, you can use the intersection fe feature on the, on, the, on the calc menu and get that intersection point, no problem. So now the question is to use ex algebra to find them exactly. Well, there's a few ways you could do this. I'm not going to go over the whole idea of it. Since we already have these in y equals form, you could just set them equal. But what I did from the beginning was I actually made this equation say x equals 10 minus 3y, like so. And then I substituted that into my circle equation. So algebraically, and I'll write it all the way over here, my equation that I had to solve for was 10 minus 3y quantity squared plus y squared equals 100. I just, I took this and I substituted into this equation. So here's the equation I'm using. It's my equation of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 100. So that's my circle equation. And I took my line equation over here, and I just substituted in for, I made it say x equals, and substituted in for this x right here. And then we'd solve for y, distribution, and all the good algebra stuff. Why would you plug in y squared? Why don't you plug in square root of 100 minus x squared? Square root of 100 minus, you could, uh, yeah, you could have taken this. But where did you get, why is it just y squared? This y squared? That's the, this one, that's from this, from the circle formula. Oh, you're solving for y. I'm solving for y. So I, yeah, so I, here's our circle formula. 
Here it is again, our circle equation they gave us up here. And I just took my line equations, made it say x equals, and plug that into that one. So it's substitution. Usually we do it with two lines and find the intersection point. And this time I'm doing it with two, uh, with a, a circle and a line. You're going to get two answers for y here because it's y squared. And your two answers for y should be 0 and 6. And then you have to plug them back in to get the x. Okay? But that's the algebra idea. I'm not going to go all the way through, but that's what you'll get. And that was just why they're saying to, to confirm that point using algebra. Okay, if we did this on a test, I probably wouldn't ask you to. I might ask you to set up the equation, but I just want to see that point right there. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, now the main idea that we kind of get from here is this section. That's called a chord. A chord is a line segment that runs across your circle. Okay, little side note, what's the biggest chord in a circle? The diameter. The diameter, yeah. I could draw this chord right here, and that chord right there is definitely your biggest, your biggest chord, your diameter is. Okay? So this is the continuation from the last one. Now it says, what percentage of the circumference of the circle lies above the chord AB? So if you think about this, here's our entire circumference. That's our distance all the way around our circle, right? And their question is, what percentage lies above AB? So what percentage? I'm going to try to do this the best I can. It's not going to be pretty, not bad. What percentage is that purple arc according to the whole length? Okay, any ideas of how we could do that? Yes? You could find the angle that the chord and the diameter makes, and then you'd find the arc of that part right there. Exactly. So if I just cut out, then you subtract that from 180. Okay, so, so here's what we're going to do. Think about this for a second. Let's say I had, and for those of you who weren't quite sure what she was saying, she's, a, she's right. Let's say I had, I want to find just this amount of arc length. What percentage is that? Okay, it's 25%, but it's 90 degrees, right? So if I drew this whole arc here, this angle is 90 degrees, and since 90 degrees is, or 90 is 25% of the 360, that's where the 25% comes from. That makes sense? So clear that. Okay. Same idea goes if I had this half of the arc, half of this arc would be 180, and this angle right here is 180. So 180 is 50% of the 360. So if I can draw this angle right here, Right, I need to find that angle right there. So if I can find that angle, whatever this angle is, divide that by 360, that'll give us our percentage of the circle above that chord. That makes sense? So, so yeah, what Mitchell's saying is that, wait a second, let's draw the triangle here. I don't know what that angle is right here, but we can find the angle here because we know what this point is up here. We already figured this point out to be negative 8, 6, Exactly 150? I don't know. Let's think of this angle, this triangle right here. We have a right triangle right there. What's the height of that triangle? Six. What's the base length of the triangle? Eight. How can I find this angle right here? Inverse trig function. I'm going to go tan. Inverse tan of? 6 over 8. Because we want to do opposite over adjacent. So inverse tan of 6 over 8. What do we get in degrees there? 36.9 degrees goes there. So how are we going to figure out the purple angle? 180 minus that. 
and that gives us 143.1 degrees. This angle here is 143.1 degrees. So now how do we figure out the percentage here? Divide it by 360. And what, what do we get for our percentage? 40%. So this is 39.75%. Which is probably a good, I mean, if you were just going to guess, if you were just going to guess here, I mean, you know that this is 25% and this is 50%, you know, all the way here. It's got to be between 25 and 50%. But... Now we have an exact answer, or close to it, because we rounded off. Mason. With the line already going through, mm -hmm. done at that angle, and then... So you're saying is that this angle right... Because that 36.9 should be the same as right there. It's not, though. That's a, we're going to hit that. This angle here, and this is a good question, is not the same as this angle here. Isn't it half? Why would it be half? Yeah, if you think, think of this idea, this triangle right here and this triangle, so we have a small triangle, that gives us an angle of 36.9. The way I think about it is, yeah, this triangle is twice as long, okay? So this angle right here, and actually I'm looking at this, this entire triangle. How is it not, though? It just seems like it should be. It seems like it should be. It's, I mean, it, it's intuitive. It looks like this is the same as that. Right, the same way it should be parallel. That these two lines would have to be parallel, right? And those two lines are not parallel, so that means, and to this transversal, so yeah, these can't be equal. And it's true that this is going to be half of that. This is called the central angle. And this is all stuff we're going to be talking about. That's our central angle. And this right here is called an inscribed angle. Inscribed angle is half the arc measurement. A central angle is equal to the arc measurement. So wait. Yes. So 143.1 is 39% of a 360 degree angle. Correct. Circle. Yes. And exactly. so you just take that and divide it by a 360. Yeah. Yeah, all the other stuff, we, you know, is, is new. And then why you said something about the how 39 is close to the central angle? No, I was saying that 39%, it would make sense because... If I just went a quarter of that circle, it'd be 25%. And if I went half, that circle would be 50%. Oh, yeah. And since I'm going not quite half, then it okay. would make sense it's about 40.